Hello, this is Jason. Anyway, I'm here to show you my very first gaming video I've ever made. And this is about City Skylines, one of my favorite all-time games. This is a little town that I created called Edison. And I've been trying out a few different ideas and techniques that I've been wanting to build in various cities. So let me give you a quick little tour of how it all started. So right here is our original road connection and original area. So I had the, I decided to build, extend the highways out a little bit and build a road here. Eventually it was, a, it was only a small double lane road because that's all they give you at the beginning of the game. And eventually I was able to build into this large highway. I've decided other than the move it tool and a couple building mods to not really have any mods on here that affect gameplay um, that give you an advantage. I want to have the challenge of actually building the city correctly. So over on one side of the road, so we look right here, this was the dividing line. On the right side, I built all the uh, residential. On the left side for the first block was commercial. And then beyond that on the left side was industrial. That's how I started the city. And of course, at the beginning of the game, you only get low density residential, which this whole entire area eventually was low density res residential. The center area I decided later on in the game, I upgraded up to higher density. And when you get the really upgraded buildings, the level three buildings, this is what the difference between low density and high density looks like. I mean, that's a pretty massive building, but yet they say only 26 households live in that building. And yet six households live in this itty bitty little building right here. And seven live in that one and five in that one. And then this big tall building was 26. So, you know, in reality, this big tall building would be 300 or 400 residences. Of course, I built the small roads here. You want to have the small roads because they don't attract as much many cars. Um, the people go slower there and they make a lot less noise. And as you can tell by the little people with the earmuffs over here, noise is one of their biggest complaints. So right here, they probably have a lot of noise because they have a couple different roads all working together. I believe I have something noisy over here too. So, so you can see the different buildings. Over here, they have the Giga Store, um, high density commercial, high density. But anyway, you can love the way this game looks. I have been into computers all my whole life. and. I really got into computers because of the City Simulator games, because it was the very first game that made my mind really, really think and really, really go, wow, look how beautiful that building is. Anyway, go, 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 and the very first time I had it, I only had a CGA monitor and ended up having to play in monochrome because that's all that we could do. And, you know, eventually was able to get up to here, City Skylines. This is in, I'm playing right here in 4K. Um, and it's just awfully beautiful. I mean, you zoom in here. Look at this. You can zoom in as far as you like. Um, if you're looking through the buildings, I mean, that's a beautiful skyline. So let me, um, I mean, I don't want to be too erratic for y'all here. So when you zoom in, you can see the ones up front actually become blurry, just like they would in real life. And then you have, you know, when you zoom out there, all the buildings in the far background, depth of field, um, they're also blurry. So if you look at the overview of the map, we originally started in this zone over here, and then eventually I built a bridge, and we had a little commercial area over here, and kept building residential and residential over here, and eventually it got pretty busy. So I built a second bridge and built a huge residential over here, area here, all in one build, all high density with massive amounts of schools and amenities, the huge uh, lung of the city, parks over here and everything to connect it. And I built this long road that goes over here and they, they, these two roads turn as an X right here. And then I built this giant four leaf clover so that the people over in the industrial areas didn't have to drive all the way around. Then I built this, you know, what I thought was a creative little on ramp off ramp system over here. Um, I do like all my stuff to be underground as much as possible. So all this is a giant clover. I have a loop around here, which that's why people aren't using the outer rings, because this loop is actually technically shorter. But eventually, when I make this freeway go straight, I'm going to disconnect that loop. I like having really nice, long streets that you can see actually go somewhere. You know, you don't want to be 
stuck. So that's, I mean, that's a really long street, which just ends by turning into the other really long street. And this is the street that I was telling you about with the X. Okay, let me try to navigate. And then that gives you flying through the city, you know, right into the freeway. So everything is fluid, connects right away. I don't have any of the major streets that dead end on anything other than another major street. And this one here I decided to be really creative because it is like a T-junction. And I wanted it to have all the different on-ramps and off-ramps. But let me show you what I did. I'm at underground. So I have a ramp coming from here. And this is a one-way street. And they get onto the freeway and they go, well, actually it's a two-way street so the people in the houses can get out. And they can go drive right there. And then the people getting off this side of the freeway go there. And then for the other side of the freeway, they simply go right here, and I put little barriers here to protect from the sound. I um, mean, click here if you want to add more trees. I did read somewhere that, you know, adding additional trees really does protect the sound in residential areas. And you can click around because you can't really worry about the tree actually making some other piece of construction go away. So you see I just added all those trees right there. Very nice. So. Let me give you a little overview. So we have a lot of cool little features. If you've never played City Skylines before, I can give you some little shows real quick. So this is Leisure. You want to build a park, and that gives you very high leisure. Um, you could build various things. Like here is a little bouncy house, right? So we're going to build the bouncy house. Let's see. This is a very... Let's see, right? No, this, I left the place in blank on purpose for... To build a road. So we're going to build the park right here. Now we're starting to get a little complaints about the sewage not working. Now the first thing you want to check is, there, is that they have water and the answer is yes they do have water. So is there not enough sewer available? No. There's, we're starting to run low. We already have four of the echo water treatment centers. They're right over here all, and the water is going north up, here, up away from the city right here. So but this is a special echo water which basically drops in water that's completely clean anyway. So I am going to build one more water purification before it dumps it in the river type plant and hook it up. So now we have that and in a few seconds you're going to see the sewage treatment amount. Well, when as soon as this goes online it'll turn green and then that sewage treatment amount will go way up. And let's click back on it so you can see that happen. And there it goes. Just turned green and our sewage treatment went way up. Water availability is getting kind of low too. Uh, you could do the pumps where it just pumps it right out of the river, or you could do the uh, groundwater one. I kind of like to have the groundwater one. I like to put them, as you can see, at the, at the entrances to freeways and various things. It gives people a marker. So there already is a groundwater one on this side of the freeway. So I'm going to build another one directly across on the other side of the freeway. And hook that in. And now we have it all hooked up. So our water availability would go there. Now, we can actually go to the budget, and because our water availability is higher, we can lower our budget. The most efficient is at 100%, and it gets less efficient as you go above and, you know, per percent per, per dollar you spend. So we're going to do that right there, and our electricity is still at 89%. Let's double check on that. And this is the kind of balancing. So we can actually lower our electricity produ production. We're way too high right now. But I'm just going to leave it the same because I don't need to worry about it. If you click over here, you know, if we lower it, we'll probably save a thousand dollars a month. So, but on a budget, on a monthly budget of two hundred and twelve thousand, it makes a small difference. We're bringing in two hundred and twelve. We're spending one eighty-seven. We're making a pretty good profit right here. These are our tax rates. So I am going to start lowering the tax rates a little bit. I want to get in some bigger, higher density office zones. So I just lowered that. So, but I love how you know I was able to put all the access on the other side of the river right here. I mean, of, away from the buildings, so I could put a giant wall of glass all the way along the riverfront. I do have a couple entrances for bridges right here, and I do have a tunnel. I could have built the tunnel a little bit closer in, but I already had this road with some beautiful buildings on it, so decided to build the tunnel right there. And if you want to see the tunnel, that is our only tunnel that goes underneath the thing for underneath the river for traffic. 
we do have two and two over here and one over here subway tunnels and these are quickly shuttles that go between the green loop which is has goes all the way around this area and it connects over here to the blue loop and to the yellow and orange areas so let's give you a quick overview of what that looks like so our most popular line is the orange line which you can see people crowding into those stations and I love how you can drill down and you get so much information so we're gonna look at the orange line and the orange line I actually pay extra money on that we get seven uh, let me get this out of here so we have seven vehicles and most of the vehicles are pretty much full as they drive as they go through we actually so you'll be able to see it as it goes down through the line. Over here, they get completely full. So as you can tell right here, an orange the orange one's coming in, and you get the, the red one's leaving, the orange one's coming in. There we go. So we'll just, just go back to the orange one. Um, hmm. It doesn't show underground as much that way. So I hate having to be on the, um, the bad tool. So you got this right here. We got a lot of people. Standing right. Oh, that's a bus stop. Okay, I think that's a bus stop. I don't, I don't think. Yeah, there it is. You see the bus picking up the people right now, and this bus stop's close to a couple different. Well, hopefully, a few people can get on that bus. I might need to increase the bus line a little bit. So, anyway, this game's really awesome because you can customize everything. I did decided to try building a monorail. So in this little section over here, the little second city, decided to build that disconnected from the rest. Uh, we have a monorail here. Now if you notice on the roofs, these all have they're like greenery on the sides of the buildings, on their solar panels, and there's roof, uh, because I decided to make these buildings work a lot more. So if you notice, there's a lot of people walking on this street. You probably don't even see it right now. Well, the bus stations, over, I mean, the train, the giant train stations over here, and there are no buses in this particular area yet because I just built this area. So the train station's there and the monorail station's here, so you get a pretty massive amount of people um, w walking between the two. So here is an incoming train. So And you can see right here, these people are sick. It's mostly because there's too much noise here. So... We're going to click off the bulldoze section. So we're going to watch the people get off the train. And there should be a pretty sizable amount of people getting off this train. So they're going to go down through this little tunnel and then walk underneath the train tracks. And they're going to come out right here. And here they come. It's like a river of people. So if you click on one of the people and you can happen to get this little green dot before they walk away. Ah, let's try it again. This is one thing they need to have. I think there should be a keyboard stroke for that. So if you see where you can walk, watch where all these massive crowds go. And when you see the whole entire crowd pretty much pile right into the monorail station over here, and the monorail station's overcrowded, that tells me I need to change a few things. So a good chunk of this, the people in this monorail station are coming from that train station, but there is no train station anywhere else in my city for passengers. So that means I really, really need to make a new train station for passengers. So let me click on the monorail here. So this lets you actually view the monorail. There are the maximum 180 people on this monorail. And you can kind of see the line right there. And this is the way that they let, let them into the city. And if you notice about a good chunk are going to get off at the first station. Now right at the first station there are actually are two different subway lines right next door to that first station. Here you can see the on-ramp. I mean to me this looks pretty dang cool. So here's the mon the station and right above it as you can see right here that little gray panel that's the um, that's this right here you can see that's the subway station underground. And then this is going to go a little bit deeper into the city. We got only 23 people left on it by this point. And this is the end of the line for this particular line. So let's spin around and we'll fall going the other direction. So building these is a little bit difficult. Um, I couldn't get the station to actually build on top of the road here. It wouldn't line up. I didn't want to, I didn't want to 
jeopardize the grid of my city over just putting a monorail station, so I put it next to the road. The other stations are all on the road because I was able to build those before I built the monorail. And we have a nuclear power plant over here that is the m main source of our power. And as I said before, so this is uh, this one actually doesn't even interact with the freeway. There's an interchange right here, so I thought it was kind of redundant to interact. I, I may put a little uh, on-ramp, off-ramp for the same direction, maybe make a loop around. Um, you're seeing the train go underneath the freeway here and the appearing over here. And there's a train station here. When I first started building, there's another train station over here, and it goes underneath this giant mountain. If you look at this real quick, let me close this. So this mountain is actually taller than my skyscrapers. So anyway, it's the, this is an ore district. So this particular area is customized for ore. And to do a customization is really simple. You're going to click districts. You're going to lay out the, the map of your district. So you can click right there and make it a little bit bigger. And then this lets you erase the district. So if you want to erase this area right here, you can erase that area. And then you can set rules for that district. So do you want that district to be a designated ore industry? Well, yes, we do. So then we click right there, and now it's designated ore. I can click a different one. Now, I also have the option to make it commercial specialization. So we can do organic and local produce. That's it for commercial, not very much fun. And then we have the IT cluster. So I did make that new city every area there an IT cluster, and then I made it green housing. So we're able to get that all done. So as we play right here, on my previous video, I added this little section right here, uh, sitting off. So I'll show you how roads work in case you haven't been playing before. And I mean, why would you be watching a video if you haven't been playing? So we're going to make this want this uh, busy road. Actually, where is there? The green, green lines. So that one, we I made just enough room for it up to keep going. So eventually, we're going to make this highway connect and do a lot of other cool things. So we can make an additional road right there. Now we're going to click on our single lane highway. Normally we don't want to have too many connections through the big ones, but in this particular case, now see right there, it made this dotted line appear, which lets me know that that can go straight to there, which is a really good feature. And then this one's going to go straight to there. We're going to have 90 degrees, perfect grid. And then that's going to connect right there. And now we have a nice little complete road segment area. Now, of course, if you look at the little squares that are inside the zoning area, we're not zoning anything in the middle here because that has no road access. And they have to be within four squares of a road to build a building for some reason. So what I can do is I can build an itty bitty little road segment here just to give people a little local access. Now, if I go over here, I'm eating up eight squares of road segments, but I'm adding only an extra 12 squares. So is it really worth adding all that extra road to get that extra space? I usually don't do that. And in this particular example, I'm going to do something completely different. I'm going to build a building that's just too big to put anywhere else anyway. So you have all these different buildings that you can build that are specialty one-time off buildings. So if I build this right here, it's going to actually use up some of those squares. And what is this building? This is the Statue of Wealth. So we don't have a Statue of Wealth yet. It generates some money, so we're going to put it on the major road, and boom, we have a statue of wealth. Now, we're going to do some zoning real quick. So the blue zoning is where you get the really, really tall buildings, but only where people really want to be. If you're this far away, you're not going to get the really nice tall buildings. You're going to get these short buildings. Um, if you keep, So we're going to build office space because right here, that's part of the industrial, and it's in high demand. So we're going to build office space. And so now I could either wait for buildings to get built and then possibly bulldoze a road here or, you know, because I hate bulldozing pretty buildings. So I'm just going to go and make a little block. And of course, I could have done this differently and there's lots of ways to do it. So I'm, I'm going to erase the zoning for those particular areas so that that gets zoned. Now, residential, I don't really want to build too much residential over here. We're, there's really no desire for residential. Too many people are building it over there. And there isn't 
any amenities over here. I built this area over here for the residential with the amenities built in. So we're not going to build residential over here. I will build a little bit of dense commercial simply because the people are demanding it. So we're going to go back to the pouring one, which I, I find easier. I mean, I could draw a square, but, you know, hey, we'll draw a square over here. So right there, draw a square, boom. Now we have a square. And we'll draw a square over here, too, on this side. Now, if you try to draw on top of a different color, it will not change the color. You have to actually erase that color and then add it back in. So let's check the water features. That looks good. It was under control. Now, over here, they're complaining about water. Now, you got to realize that these people... The pipes use up a lot of stuff, so the distance really, really counts. So over here is where the water gets sucked in and deposited. So why don't we just try connecting this pipe over with, let's try this pipe, and then we'll connect this pipe with this pipe. Oh, we missed, missed it a little bit. Now see, that made a more efficient network, so all of those people over here just got water. But the people over here did not. So we do need a little bit more water. So we were looking at the water earlier. Water availability is pretty low. And remember, we, we controlled the budget, and we reduced the water spending. But going above 100% is actually kind of inefficient. And with this many water facilities, we don't really want to do that. So we're going to pick another tower. Now, freeways are already really, really noisy. And why not put some noisy water pump in the middle of freeways? Because I'm not going to put a house nearby there anyway. So we're going to hook up the pipe just to the nearest pipe, boom, water. And you don't want to make sure it's in the electrical area, so it just happened to be just barely close enough to those houses, or else I'd be running power lines. And as you see right here, all the bubbles are popping, and they have water. Voila! So as, as I said before, I like building the... Um, over here we have giant oil areas, but I like to build all the on-ramps and off-ramps underground. So here's a pretty sizable interchange. All the ramps are underground. So it has two little ramps, and that allows the people to get on and off in both directions for this road here. So we're having another fire. Let's see. Well, there's a fire station there, so eventually it'll get taken care of. So we are starting to get a little bit of uh, difficulty over here. So. I mean, I try to make people at least learn one or two things in every video. Obviously, if you're playing this game, you're going to want to click through all these different um, buttons right here to see what different things do. And obviously, you, you can tell right here that there's a pretty bad pollution zone. That's why this is so far away from any houses. The nearest houses are way over here and way over here. So people do like to have to use the freeways to get around. There are a few bus station, bus stops over here, so we get a pretty good amount of that. If you click on outside connections, the oil industry is our, I mean, actually goods is our major import, which means we need to build more factories. We have very little factories. And then export oil products is our number one export. Trees over here, and then way over here we have our Highland District, which is the ore. Our only place where we make goods is this little section over here. So because we are importing goods, that means we are losing a pretty good amount of money. So the next industrial section I build, which I'm probably going to put right here, will most likely be um, goods creation. So wind, that lets you know where the pollution's going. Transportation, you know, here's all my beautiful subway lines. The green, the green spikes are the subway stations. The um, orange ones are bus, are train stations. And the red ones are monorail. This sole blue one over here, that's our bus station headquarters. So that's where all the buses come and leave from. They never actually go back there, so it's fine. How much wealth is the city? Well, you know, when you build the taller buildings, that's because the land costs more money. So you can always see where the tall buildings are is where you're wealthy. Here's where the resources are. So we have the ore area over here. We have the big oil area here. And this oil area is very massive with another massive one over here so we could be running oil um, that is one mod that I did put on where your oil and your ore and your trees don't run out um, I don't like mods normally but it's really annoying building a whole entire area of your city and then you know five hours into playing the game all of a sudden that whole area dies because the underlying resource died out so in reality you know 
it does die out, but not that quickly in, you know, five hours. So we have terrain height, kind of boring. Tourism, so we have our cool little buildings that attract tourists. Uh, one of the important things you want to notice in the game is death care. Now, death care is cemeteries and crematoriums. And it's kind of bad to talk about, but here's the crematorium. Now, one of the most interesting things I learned, and it definitely is true in the game, is you never want to have it show a dead person. So when you zoom, when you zoom out, you really can't see the dead people. Um, it, but when you zoom in, sometimes you're going to get, if a sick person's sick too long, they're going to die. And when they die, they need to be cremated or buried relatively quickly. If they are not cremated or buried relatively quickly, that entire building will disappear. That entire building, even if it's a giant skyscraper, for one dead person that sits there too long, it'll completely disappear. So you, if to build a big city with big buildings, you can't have them disappear and reset to level zero. So you need to have that death care, click over here, spread around the city. I mean, I was, all, every single purple line you see is a different crematorium. And the big one over here, that's the cemetery that we started off with at the very beginning of the game. We also built, for power, I mean for trash, because that's another thing you got to concern yourself with, we built a lot of, uh, we have a few recycling centers and then a lot of uh, the trash burning facilities. And we do have two landfills. Now what I do with the landfills is I like to empty them. So this one's 100% full, so I'm going to click the empty button. And then this one should be 87% full, so I'm going to click the empty button on that. Actually, I'm not going to do them both at the same time, because when you do them both at the same time, it kind of overwhelms the system. They will take that trash before they take the trash. Now, over right next door to over here, there is one incinerator. I have to find it right there. So they will just take the trash to that incinerator there. Um, I think there's another one over here somewhere. Anyway, that's where they take the trash. I'm experimenting with a lot of different things. So we have the big highways. They bring the majority of the traffic. Um, as you can tell, I mean, most cities with this much density do seem to have pretty much gridlock. And I've been working on that a lot. Um, there's a little bit of backup right here, three, three, three rows back. Over here, we have a little one-way bridge. Decided to try to be creative there. Over here, we have this big underground tunnel. That's our only tunnel that goes across the road. So, anyway. Hopefully you enjoy this game as much as I do. Along the freeway, we have this giant wall of buildings. No, no roads go through this, wall, through this wall of buildings at all. It's just an entirely long stretch. And because the residential properties don't like to be next to the freeway, every single one of these is commercial. So, and this little twisted building, that's really nice looking. I haven't seen that one before. The Sterling Residence. So, anyway, that's really cool. I don't know if I showed you if you can. You hold down W and you hit Q and E and you can spin around. So we can. So you can see the trains off in the distance, and if you get the right direction, you can kind of center down the middle, and you have the little roundabout right there. And let's go the same direction as traffic. And you can make that where you're spinning your camera around that. Oh, now we got some more fires over here. Should we take care of that, you think? Oh, but this is a forest products area. I guess forest products are highly flammable. Let's check out the fire protection. Okay, so we did not... So we have the forest products area, and we did not put a fire station. So let's, um, let's remedy that right now. We'll put a little fire station. Let's see, right here should be fine. And as soon as you add a new item, as we saw earlier, the area around it populates to be blue instead of red. And now we have the new item. I don't know if the fire's out. Yeah, it probably went out right before we even built that. So they're building trees. I do have a little bit of, this area is outside of the zone, so you have a few smokestack factories. And the same thing on the other side. We do have a nice big train station here. Oh, if you want to see my little tip on train stations, you want to. You don't want the trains to have to cross the trains. And if you take a two-lane train station and you cross it with another two-lane train station, you're going to have nothing but backup. 
So what we've done here is we made some one lane like off ramp on ramps to connect to another two lane over here. So this two lane, I didn't want to have the two lanes have to go loop around and connect over here. So I did find it viable to make it have a little connection here. So if they want to go that way, they can, they'll actually cross the two lane here blocking traffic. If they want to go the other way, they'll take this bypass. So we'll probably see this red train here go take the other bypass. And this one's taking the bypass over the top of the hill. Oh, so that in case there's a train coming this way, it just solved blocking it. And this train going that way would have blocked a train because that would have to be on the correct side of the road. So it would have blocked any train coming in. So, so you see how, see that one right there just blocked anybody coming in. So it's good to have a couple extra of these one-way tracks. Now, we also can build one-way ramps, too, one-way reliever ramps. So you have, like, all this traffic right here. So you can actually make a really, really long off-ramp just to bring traffic from one location to another. Like, for example, one thing that I've done in the past, and I haven't done it in this city, if, for example, we have all of we have this freeway here, and you have all this traffic trying to get to over to this industrial park. And they're having to drive through all this. So what we can do is we can bring, build a one or two lane little one directional tunnel going through underneath underground. You know, this one has a tunnel that goes right through here too. This is kind of an interesting interchange of two of those. But you can build an underground tunnel going from here all the way to over here underground. Of course, you have to avoid, avoid the subways because you don't want to, or you have to go underneath them. And that would alleviate that traffic situation. Unfortunately, that... I mean, fortunately, that traffic situation isn't too dire. The traffic situation over here is getting a little bit dire. So what we can do, I'm going to give you an example of one right now. So we're going to build a specialized little ramp. So we're just going to build a one lane. And, you know, just kind of, there's a, the off ramp right here. So we're going to get the traffic coming from the off ramp. And we're going to go kind of behind there. Let's see. So we have the move it tool. Well, actually, we have way too much power anyway. So let's just let's just delete this. I'm under ground view, so let's go to the above ground view, and we're going to delete the fan. And no, it's not a fan, but you know, still. So back to the off ramp. So let's go over here, and you know, we're not going to ever really use this as a road connector. And off-ramps always want to be curved for some reason, so I don't want to connect it right there, but I don't want to connect it. So the problem is, if I connect it here, it's going to bulldoze those two buildings, which they'll just rebuild, so that's not much much of a problem. If I build it over here, it's going to make an extra interchange on that road. It's going to add a lot more traffic, which is going to basically counteract the situation. So we're going to build it right here. So as soon as you build that, the traffic that wants to go down this road, this road, or this road, We'll probably start taking this road instead. So, I mean, that was pretty quick. You can see what amount of vehicles are taking that road. And we still got a pretty good backup because those vehicles had already went ahead of time. Now, another thing you could do is you can click over here, go to junctions, and you can take this stop sign, stoplight and make it into, let's see, we'll just make it into stop sign this way and a stop sign this way. So if people are turning here, well, let me get a stop sign that way. So they all have to stop, except for the people coming into the area. Well, there's no reason to make those people stop because they're all turning right anyway. All right, so that should also alleviate it. So between those, you can also click on uh, routes, and this will actually give you the route data for that route. So we're going to see this right here, and there's a pretty good amount of traffic on that route already. So that was a good, a good little reliever. And so if you see right here, there's a pretty good chunk of that traffic is going over here instead. So we look at the little parts where it jumps out. I would say at least a third of the traffic, because you can count by the number of arrows, about a third of the traffic is going and taking this little way this way. So where, is, where are they going? They're all pretty much turning right. A few of them are going straight, so we're going to click on just this. So a handful, mostly residential ones, are actually turning back left. Well, that's kind of bizarre. 
So they turn here. Oh, I see. Because they want to turn right into here. And turning left across traffic sometimes is difficult in this game. So, you know, that little, that little thing is being pretty powerful. And it's getting traffic from all over the city is going on that little ramp that we just built. Ah, so interesting. We've disconnected by doing that electrical problem. We actually accidentally disconnected our electrical grid. Now, fortunately, this area here produces more electricity than it needs. Unfortunately, this part of town doesn't. But because of having ex there's an each side that we've actually created two completely separate electrical grids. But this side and this side each create more power than they each need. Um, this side has the nuclear power plant, and this one has all these other plants. And it is a bad move to not reconnect them, so I will reconnect them right there. So now they're reconnected. But the city is very resilient, and if you do screw something up, it is going to holler at you. I built this in pretty much a grid, so later on in the game I decided we had all this commercial, I mean all this industrial over here. So let's build another giant residential zone over here, which is what I did. And this area here, I decided not to do grids. I kind of went zigzag patterns. And um, it does work just about as well. You just need to make sure you have enough interchanges at various points. So anyway, I think that's going to be enough for one video. Have an awesome day. And... Play some city skylines. My projects for this city for the next time you view it. Um, somewhere in this area, I'm planning on building an airport so that people can get to it. I'm going to be expanding the industrial area over here and expanding a forest area over here and another big industrial area over here. And once that's all built, they're going to need more residences. This area over here will be a giant residential area. Um, probably put a couple residential, make this a little bit more residential over here and across the way over here, more residential. I'm not going to buy these mountains. They're kind of silly. Um, it does get more and more expensive every time you buy a square. Um, I have this big square here I haven't even really built anything in, so that'll be where we'll definitely expand a lot. I'll probably buy a square over here next to the ocean. Then I'll actually have more access to the rail line. So that's where we're building in the next hours. Once I get that done, I'll probably up, make a video and upload that. Well, hopefully you learned about a little bit about City Skylines. If you have any interest in um, any particular topics, make sure you do a comment, and I'll try to address all those comments in my next City Skylines video. Thank you. Bye. And stop.